Today during Coding Club, you'll be programming a robot called Spiro. If you look at your screen, um, on the left here I have an app called Lightning Lab. It's one of several apps that you can use to program your Spiro. And on the right I have a video camera pointed at my Spiro, which admittedly is a little blurry, but luckily you'll see yours uh, in real, real life, which will be crystal clear. Uh, so the way, if you look at Spiro, he has no plug. So there's um, no way you can plug him into a PC or a laptop in order to copy the code down to Spiro. So the way you do that is using a technology called Bluetooth. It allows two devices to communicate with each other wirelessly. Your teacher is going to set up your tablet uh, to connect to your Spiro. So we're going to write our code in our app, and it's going to copy down to the Spiro, and the Spiro is going to do what you told it to do. So a um, little bit about what Spiro can do. Um, let's make this full screen. Um, I have a program on the uh, side here written just to make him move. He can roll, he can change color, and he can spin, among other things. Um, and I do that, like I said, with the app. I'm running a simulator here, so you're going to do, do yours on um, iPad. Uh, let's take a look a little bit at this app. Uh, at the bottom, you have menus, and behind each menu are a list of commands that Spiro can do. Um, under actions are some of the things you saw already. You saw him roll, you saw him spin, uh, you saw him change color. If I wanted to do that, I can just drag one of these commands up here and uh, they click together like Lego blocks and that's how you add command after command. Under the control menu, uh, you're going to want to do some things uh, like delay if you want to make your program pause for a minute. It's very useful with colors actually. And looping is a very key concept to computer programming. You're going to want to do something over and over and over. And that's what a loop is. It just does something repeatedly in a program. Operators are the things you learn in math class, addition and subtraction. We're going to use that today. Uh, a variable is also a key concept in coding. And what a variable is, it's like, think of it like a bucket with a name on it. And you can put a value in the bucket. And then your program will just refer to the bucket. It'll just go to the bucket and see what value is inside the bucket at that time. And then a different part of your program can actually change the value of what's in the bucket. Uh, we're going to do that today as well. Uh, Spiro can sense several things about himself. Uh, we're going to go ahead and control those with our code today, though. Uh, he also can sense several events, like um, we're going to do next week a collision event. Spiro can tell when he has collided with a hard surface. So if you wanted to get your Spiro across the library, you might want to make him, uh, if he hits a hard surface like a bookshelf, you might want to make him back up and take a right to try and get around that obstacle. Um, a function we're not going to cover today, but it's a way to take a, a list of steps and just give them one single name. It makes your code easier to read um, and a little uh, run a little better in, in many ways uh, by giving a set of routine tasks one name and then calling that name instead of using the list of tasks each time. Um, so we're going to start out by doing some colors. I'm going to drag these up. We're going to set his color. And we're also going to do a fade, which is really cool. It lets you fade from one color to another. These commands take uh, a single argument, and that is the color. I'm just going to pick it from the color wheel. I'll make him do pink. And then I'll make him do um, purple and then an aqua color. Did I get that? I think so. And then he's going to fade from green to orange. Now notice the fade command has an extra argument here in seconds. It tells how long do we want him to fade from green to orange, and I picked two. Uh, remember I said there was a delay command that's useful for colors? I'm going to use that here because it is extremely useful. Um, if I didn't put a delay in between, you would never see the pink or the purple. It would just change so quickly that it would be almost like it didn't happen. So I'm gonna add a one second delay in between. So it's gonna turn pink, wait a second, turn purple, wait a second, turn aqua, wait a second, and then um, fade from green to orange for two seconds. Let me run that here on the side. If you look on the right, he's pink, and then he's purple, and he's aqua, and now he's fading from green to orange. 
So that's how the uh, color commands work. Uh, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to go back and create a new project. I'm going to hit the plus sign to do that. And we're going to create a project called Square. Uh, I'm going to make our Sphero roll in the shape of a square. So I'm going to add the roll command four times, one for each side of the square. And you'll notice that this command takes three arguments. It wants to know for how many seconds am I going to roll? I'm going to change them all to one second. And then the second command is the speed. How fast do you want him to roll? I'm going to make him roll just about 50. And they won't be exact, and that's OK. Uh, by the way, if you make him roll as fast as he possibly can, you will waste most of your coding club trying to collect your Spiro from under a desk or behind a bookshelf because he will get away from you. So 50 is a nice slow speed. It's a very controlled speed. Oh, sorry. The last argument here is the direction. Spiro wants to know what direction he is headed. Uh, one thing you need to know about Spiro is he is a circle and he has uh, a logo on him, but it's not a reliable way to tell what way he's facing. Uh, I can't show you here in this app, but on your app, you're going to click this little icon. It'll tell you, it'll light up his little tail light. So the tail light will tell you, um, let's see if you can see it on the video. Do you see the tail light there? That little, I'm moving it. The tail light tells you what direction he is facing. Uh, if you, like I said, you make him go too fast and he gets away from you and you have to go pick him up, chances are you're going to spin him in your hand when you put him down and you're going to have to readjust his tail light to tell which direction he is headed. Once you know what direction he's headed, you can make him roll in that in whatever direction you like. Uh, the way he faces is just like all the degrees of a circle. So it's 360 degrees all the way around. If I leave him at zero, he is facing straight ahead. He's going to go straight. If I make it 90, he's going to take a right. If I make it 180, he's going to go backwards. And if I make it 270, he's going to go left. So the first direction I want him to go is zero. And the second one is 90. The third is 180. Oops, it really doesn't matter. Uh, and the last one is 270. So he is going to go, I'll just draw it over here. He's going to go 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 270, oh, well, sorry, 180, and then 270 left. So 0, 90, 180, 270. So let's go ahead and um, run that. Make this full screen so you can see it. So there he goes. All right, perfect. Uh, we talked earlier about uh, loop being a really useful thing in computer programming. And um, if you notice, it's maybe kind of cumbersome. You probably were bored just watching me. You go one second, one second, one second, one second. A loop is a really great way to just put in one roll and just loop it four times. So I have a loop. Anything that's inside the loop, I like to call it a taco because it's like a taco shell. And whatever you put inside the taco shell is going to go, it's going to do this, everything inside it four times. So I can get rid of these now. I can just put them in the trash can. The way I do that is I just drag them over to the trash can. Um, but you may be wondering, uh, how is this, last time he had a different um, degree every time he turned. How am I going to do that? My answer for that is a variable. I'm going to add a new variable under the variables menu Oops. called direction. Uh, the initial value for direction is going to be zero. Um, I can also set it, which I recommend you doing, actually. It makes your code easy to read. I'm going to put that right here. It's under the operators menu, the set command. Uh, I'm going to add another one while I'm here. And I'll explain it in a minute. It's got to be inside the taco or it won't work. And then I'm going to go to variables. So it's going to set a variable to a value. The variable that I wanted to use is direction. So initially, when I start my program, I want the direction to be 0. Then inside my loop, it's going to roll 
direction degrees, which the first time through is zero. Then I'm going to make direction B 90 more than it was last time. I will do that with an operator. I'm going to add to direction. I can put it right in this little circle here. Now I have two circles. So I'm going to say direction equals direction plus 90. So if it was 0, now it's 90. Then the next time it loops, it's going to say, I'm 90. Now I'm going to add 90 and be 180. And the next time through, 270. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, run that. And you'll see he does the exact same thing. I think I'd be more. So this is uh, very useful in coding a loop. Because remember, I had to change that one second, one second, one second, and the speed every time. If I want to make him go faster, I can just do that once. And it's just going to loop four times through. In fact, uh, a challenge for you might be after you write this code, go ahead and put a variable in there for the speed um, and the number of seconds that he rolls. So now I changed his speed to 83. Let's go ahead and, um, oops, doing that on the side here so you can see it run. Let's make him go faster. So you see he's going a little faster, a little bigger square. So that's part of the genius of using a loop when you are programming something. So you should have some handouts on the side that are going to help you do both the color exercise where you do the set color command and also do this program that makes him roll in a square. So go ahead and do that. And then if you're finished with that, you can go ahead and experiment with this and add some colors and things into your program to make it do something else experiment with the speed or with the number of seconds that he rolls. Uh, and then if you are have any time left in class, go ahead and um, practice driving him. You can hit the driving wheel here. I can't show you in this app because I'm not actually connected to the Sphero, but uh, you'll see a little, steer, a little um, steering wheel and you'll be able to uh, adjust his speed and make him go left and right and see if you can um, get good at driving him uh, around your classroom. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Um, take a look at the handouts and see if you can make the code that I wrote here today.